All right, guys, good morning. Uh, my name is Julius Gilger and proud to be on with you. We are post convention, just got done on Saturday, three days of amazing training, three days of inspiration, motivation, um, just what we all need to kind of light us up and really blast forward for the year. Uh, for those of you that were in the Phoenix event, I got to see most of you. Um, you guys heard my story, you heard a little bit about kind of what we did, but this event has changed my business and my life as of last year. And I hope that's gonna happen for you this year. Um, before we kind of get into all of, all of what we're gonna train on today and what we're gonna talk about, um, let's go over our numbers real quick. I'm gonna share our numbers of as of last week. So last week, FFL Republic, um, we submitted $128,752 in business in kind of an off week, given that um, people were prepping and flying for convention. So great job to everybody that went out and protected families last week. Um, so I'm gonna recognize the top uh, 10 people as of last week. So we had Stealthy with uh, 4,434, Rob with 5,035, uh, Shaylin, great job here in the office, 5,249, Erica, 5,518, Josh Maestas, 5,630. Myself, 8,072. Darla, she'll be on the call with us today, uh, 8,670. 8, Josh Hall here in the office with us. Great job, my man. Number three, 9,603. Um, we got Nate Fudala with 10,140. And coming in number one, John McConnell last week with 10,631. So great job to everybody that went out there and submitted business. We also had four new writers, which have been coming on strong. So Rodolfo, Jessica, Latrice, and Tabitha, great job on writing your first piece of business last week. Um, your job this week is to make sure you write business this week and every single week, because if you're not writing business, you're technically unemployed, okay? So the last thing you wanna be is unemployed. Unless you got a good retirement plan in your 20s, 30s, or 40s, we need to be on this leaderboard every week. Now, submit numbers are great, but what really matters are issue paid numbers, as you guys all know. So we're going to talk about the issue paid numbers for the month end of January. So January was a record-breaking month for FFL Republic. This is our highest four-week month uh, to date. So great job to everybody. So last month, we issue paid $469,059 in total issue paid business. Great job, you guys. We had a total of 64 writers issue pay business last month. That's our first month over 60 agents uh, writing business in, a for, in one month. So we continue to grow. We continue to help other people get on the leaderboard, make additional income. Um, and let's highlight the top 10 producers of the month of January. So uh, on today's call, we're gonna have Sean B., uh, he's here in the office. Great job, 13,360. We got Andrew G with 14,025. Aline Mog with 16,355. Erica Haynes with 20,451. John McConnell, 25,857. Josh Maestas, 28,225. Darla, I think in her second full month, if I'm not mistaken, with 28,548. Awesome job, Darla. Uh, myself with 30,140, Nate Fudala, 39,013, leading FFL Vertical, soon to be Vice President, and Clay Sweet, leading FFL Guardian and Vice President with $39,072 in issue pay business. So great job last month, you guys. Uh, quick shout out to FFL Guardian with their biggest issue paid month. So they have record submit month for FFL Guardian, excuse me, record issue paid month for FFL Guardian with 29 uh, unique writers and $241,841 in premium. And FFL Vertical is chipping away and getting close to uh, reaching VP as an agency. And they finished with 123,983 in premium.
premium with 11 agents. So great job to everybody. Couldn't be prouder uh, of you all. Couldn't, you know, just honored to be in business with everybody. Um, and today, what our goal is, is let, let's talk a little bit about convention, right? There was a lot of great things that came out of convention. And, you know, this is the first time Family First Life has had to spread convention over seven different locations. Why? Well, obviously, we're in the midst of a, uh, a global pandemic, right? And so we had to find ways to execute on this. And here's the cool thing. While the entire industry has completely shut down with meetings in person at this magnitude, we continue to find a way, we continue to lead the industry and we continue to, to set the bar high so we can continue to excel. And so I'm so blessed and honored to be a part of this organization and, and be working here with all you guys. So um, what an event, right? Like what an event. If you guys got value out of this event, which I'm hoping everyone did, uh, drop a 100 in the chat if you guys found value out of the event. I want to talk about a few things and we're going to have a few guest speakers talking today. Uh, first and foremost, some of the things that kind of hit me that I want to share, and then I want to have a few people join us as well. So we had a bunch of different speakers, right? Uh, from people in the business to people not in the business to leadership to new agents to uh, just, I mean, the whole gamut, you're able, you were able you should have been able to find someone to relate to at any, whatever city you're at, whatever location you're at, um, and some just uh, amazing stories that we've heard. A few things that really resonated with me that I wanna share with you all today. Number one, I believe it was Dave Anderson who said, nothing changes until something changes, right? That means that no matter what, you want things to change, but if you're not willing to make a change, or you don't find something to make a change with, you will never experience the change you actually want, right? It's, it sounds so simple, but sometimes it could be really overlooked, right? And I think that goes right into the next thing that he talked about, which was sacrifice, right? You giving up something of value so you can use that for something with more value, right? Um, so for me, guys, when I started, I had to sacrifice things, right? I had to sacrifice some time in the gym. I had to sacrifice some time with my daughter. I had to sacrifice time with my friends and family. But why? Because I knew that family first life and my business would provide me more value now that I needed to um, you really just jump into and, and spend more time and energy and focus in that that value would supersede anything that I would do right there and then, right? And so um, it's a choice. That's the one thing that you guys got to understand is it is a choice. Where you spend your time is a choice. You can choose to put your energy, focus, attention, money, et cetera, into family first life, or you can choose not to. And guess what? Where you put your focus is what's going to grow, right? So if you put your focus here, it's going to grow here. You put your focus into other things, it's going to grow there. So it's a choice for you guys, right? So that, that's something that hit me really big. And I think one thing that goes hand in hand with that is what we do today, guys, will determine what we get tomorrow, right? So I had the privilege and honor of, of walking across the stage as a Hall of Fame member for the first time in my family first life career. But in order for me to do that over the weekend, it was all of the activities that I took all of last year, all the sweat, all the money, all the sacrifice, all the energy that I put into this allowed me to do that, right? So if one of your goals is to become a Hall of Fame producer, well, guess what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to, you're, you're, you're going to have to make sure that your activities today will allow you to, to accomplish what you want tomorrow. Does that make sense, you guys? Does that make sense? All right. Um, those are some of the things that really kind of hit me home, hit home with me. And then, um, you know, one other thing I, I think that really kind of like struck me, I think Alex Strait actually posted this in the Facebook group. And Dave Anderson also said, discipline is a liberator. It gives you more options, right? Because if you have discipline, in your day-to-day -day activity, you have discipline in your business, you have discipline in what you do, now it's going to open up 
all the other things in life that you want, right? All the thing you're, you're now going to, to have more availability of options that you wouldn't have had if you weren't disciplined when you needed to, right? And so um, it, it's just so powerful. It's just, you know, hearing things from different perspectives and different people, um, you know, it, it, it just really hits home. The last thing I'm gonna leave you guys with this and I wanna bring on some speakers so we can all touch base with them. I can't remember who said this, but I think it's so true, right? And I kind of made a comment about it already today. But if you don't have leads, if you don't have leads, then you're unemployed, right? Why am I saying that? Or why was that said, right? And I'm repeating it. Because a lot of you guys, I think, get confused. A lot of you guys think that you're going to be able to generate this, generate business without leads. That's not our model, right? Can you, can you sell a few policies to friends and family? Sure. You know, maybe other referrals? Absolutely. But even the top producers, they all have leads, right? Can they, do they generate business through referrals? Yeah, without a doubt. We, we even heard someone here in Phoenix, um, Evelyn, she talked about her referral business and she hit Hall of Fame, but out of her referral business, it was only about 25% of it was uh, made up her whole business, right? So she did over 400,000 and only 25% was referral business. And she, and that's a lot of referral business, which was like a hundred grand, right? So if you don't have leads, you're unemployed. And so you guys, leads is the foundation of our business because clients are requesting information. All right, so that's some of the takeaways that I had. I wanna share with some of the people that um, we're at some of the different venues, right? Like we got to see what happened here in Phoenix um, and, and what it did for us. But I wanna talk to some of the other people um, that were uh, at some of these other events. So I am going to bring on, first off, I'm gonna bring on Darla. So Darla um, actually was, I'm gonna ask you to, un, I'm gonna unmute you here, Darla. Let's see. Or if you can unmute yourself. You there, Yeah, I'm muted. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Hang on one sec. Let's see what's going on here. All right. Say it one more time. Let's see. Can you hear Can you hear me? Julie, is your speaker is um, muted in the bottom of the computer speakers? Hang on one sec. Yeah, because I think they can hear you. Try again. Hi. There we go. <laughs> What's up? How are we doing out there? Hi. In the gang is all here doing all right. live dials. What's up, gang? Why don't you introduce them real quick? <laughs> okay, so this is Irving, so uh, Delio, Hi. Uh, Myra, uh, Jessica, Jonathan. Today's his first dial day. He booked his first appointment today. Yeah, Ooh. man. Oh. And um, as far as I just want to give him a shout out because he understood the value of having to, um, I mean, in order to level up, you have to have a lot of, you know, sacrifice in order to get something better. So he actually called in from work today to do dials. So shout out to him on that, job. Um, on his full time job. Um, so I introduced everybody, but I was speaking with them. And even when we went out to dinner, we were just kind of summarizing what everybody I touched base on. Um, for all of us, I mean, we really consider this as the golden ticket and um, and we're treating this as if, you know, we are going all in because, I mean, we know what the alternative is if we don't and we don't want to go back to corporate. And some of, some of us here are trying to leave that corporate life. So um, so they did get a taste as to what it is um, that's, you know, that's being offered in this business. And Cassandra just really kind of uh, opened my eyes and all of our eyes in regards to her saying that we all have we all at one point have put in 110% in a traditional corporate career while building someone else's dream. So why wouldn't you do that for yourself and more? And that was just kind of like, wow, because we all have done that at some point, one way or another. And especially to reach out when you need guidance because you don't know what you, you don't know. And I believe John Gavin stated that. And uh, coming from a corporate career, um, that was something that we all are learning to um, to change because I mean leaders we understand now that leaders are there to help you and rise you up and level you up and so that was just very eye-opening as well um Joe Miller he even said you get bills daily so why not get paid daily mm -hmm. and so that was just pretty awesome um and then as far as David Dave Anderson where he's just like there's no price without a price there's no price without a price so we have to give up to go up 
And of course, whoever helps the most families wins. And of course, um, we know what the alternative is and if, if we don't. And the main difference between a Hall of Famer and a non-Hall of Famer is that, you know, you guys invested more and ran more. That's really the main difference. And um, as simple as it is, it really is. So, I mean, we're all hyped, we're all excited and, you know, we're going all in with all of this. And um, and I, a few of us have already gotten additional people into class so um, since convention. So we're really excited. Yay! Awesome. Thank you. Great job. <laughs> um, and then lastly, you know, Sean, just putting everything back into your business for a year to 10x that. And, um, and that's really what has helped me in, in regards to my numbers is just reinvesting and running a lot more and working on, on Sundays, running on Sundays. If my numbers weren't um, up to my expectations on Friday or Saturday, then I'm going to go all in and make sure I'm running appointments on Sunday, booking appointments on Sunday, and also door knocking on Sunday. And so that was really the main difference with me. Um, I know people are coming up to me and asking for advice, and that's really all I told them. You know, work on your days off. If you're not, if your appointments aren't up to par, then make sure that they are. Simple as that. Yeah, yeah great job. I mean, I, I, you said so many good things in there, Darla. Um, um, and, and you know, I, I would say this, right? First off, let me acknowledge I had people, multiple people, reach out to me and tell me how great you did on stage. So great job to you. Shout out to Thank you. you. <laughs> uh, but also just that the time that they got to spend with you after, um, they, they realized that you're, you're, you're serious and you're committed mm -hmm. and that um, to really watch out for you. And I, and I said, I, I'm not surprised. I, I definitely know she's in it for the long, long haul. So, so great job to you because a lot of good feedback is coming up. And, and that, that just says wonders about you and your team, right? So, so awesome there. Um, what are some of the things that, what, what are some of the goals that you set coming out of convention now that you got to see it at a bigger stage? Talk to us about that. Um, definitely as far as um, reaching Hall of Fame, uh, definitely submitting over 33,000 per month and overbooking myself during, you know, on my dial days, because obviously that is your payday. And um, so I'm, I'm shooting for about 17 to 20 appointments for every set of run days. And that way I can go ahead and um, get ahead, invest in my team, invest in my, invest in my business. And the, the more I do that, the quicker I can get to where I want to be. And that way I can go ahead and start investing into, you know, the hiring campaign and doubling down on that. And just, I know there's so many people that, that are out there that are just waiting for that golden ticket, just like the way I was. And you know, and it's self, and it's true. It's selfish to not share that because if that wasn't shared, then the Genevieve's and you know the Erica's and the Josh's and you know the Alexander's, they wouldn't be in this business and find you know the golden ticket that they've always looked for. Um, so definitely, that's a, a main goal that I want to strive for, and that I'm going to strive for. Um, submitting over 10k per week, and um, and that way I can go ahead and you know obtain the issue paid that I need to get. And, um, and just really overall, just in reinvesting into my business, into my team and having them grow just as, you know, how you guys did for me. So that's really what my goal is, just this Hall of Fame. And that's really where um, my expectations are at this point. Awesome. You know, there's no other option other than that. Awesome, Darla. Love it. Love it. And, and, you know, I, one of the things we had here in Phoenix, and I'm sure you guys had it over there, is, was a Hall of Fame panel. And in our Hall of Fame panel... One of the things that the common denominator amongst everyone on the Hall of Fame panel was everyone booked on average 30 appointments per week and everyone for the most part spent between 1500 to 2000 in leads per week, right? So if you understand the formula and you understand the numbers, there's no reason why you can't reach Hall of Fame. So, so that's it, right? So if you want to do Hall of Fame or any of your team or anyone here or anyone watching now or on the replay, the formula to Hall of Fame production is really a matter of leads, appointments, and going to help families, right? So when you start with leads, you're going to spend between $1,500 and $2,000 per week, which is between, what, six to eight grand per month, right? And you're going to book between, you're going to book a minimum of 30 appointments every week, which is 120 appointments over the course of a month. And as long as you go out there and run and serve and help families as best you can, there's no reason you're going to fail. I mean, you do 30,000 a month, you know, you, you spend six to eight to make 30 to 40. It's a no brainer. Right. Yeah. And then you take that, the, the leftover capital that you have and dump it back into your business to find more people and help more people. 
now it just continues to get um, exponentially bigger because you're, you're reinvesting into your business because let's face it, sit, your money sitting in a bank account doesn't do anything for you, right? There's no interest. There's, it just sits there. Does it look pretty? Yes. Does it make you feel comfortable? <laughs> sure. But you know, I'd rather give up an extra five, 10, 15 grand per month to know that I'm going to get back 20, 30, 40, 50 a month down the road. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's all it is. And that's what, that's what uh, Sean talks about. That's what Dave Witcher did. And that's what we're all trying to do. So awesome. Anything else you want to kind of leave people with um, before um, we move to the next person? Yeah. I mean, especially for the newcomers coming in, I definitely, what helped him out a lot that Jamie Cheerio said in one podcast was just always make up in numbers what you lack in skill. And that just really shifted everything for me. And that's when I started overbooking myself and just to put myself in front of more opportunities and be able to grow because I'm still learning. And, um, and I'm definitely trying to lead by example by doing that. And, um, and that way it can go ahead and take an effect with my team as well. And um, I mean, that's pretty much it. Just always make up in numbers what you lack in skill coming in and that'll jumpstart your business exponentially. True, and then guess what's gonna happen after that? You're gonna learn the skill. Mm -hmm. and then you got the skill and then you got the numbers and then it's blast off from there so yeah. awesome job guys darla great job uh san antonio you guys I i'm excited for your team out there um our goal is to help open an office out in your in your neck of the woods here shortly within the year so um look forward to what you're going to do darla and your team and if there's anything i can do to help you out please don't hesitate to reach out okay Got it. All right, you guys. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. you. Got it. Thank you. All right. So obviously, um, you know, they're growing. Um, you know, Dar Darla's coming out the gate swinging, doing a great job. Um, and, and so, you know, there's no, you see, right. She's got people following her already. Right. Why are they following her? She's, she's finding success quickly. Right. And she's leading the way and, and motivating and inspiring others. So, all right, next up, I want to bring up, um, Sean Britson. Sean's here in the office with me locally. Let me scoot over a little bit. Let's make some room for this guy. Two big okay. dudes sitting on camera, right? This, this chair's wobbly, so if I fall over, just, just make sure you get on camera. Okay. All right, all right. I'll make sure I'll angle it and everything. We'll make it a good YouTube. Video. All right, I love it. How you doing, man? Good. Yeah. So um, for you guys weren't in Phoenix, obviously, but uh, one thing I'd say, you know, Sean, one thing I noticed about you is all weekend, you were locked in, loaded in the front row in Phoenix. I mean, you did not move. Every time I looked up, you were there. Um, so tell, tell us a little bit about your experience, what you got out of it, what value it, it's helped you and kind of talk about that. Absolutely. So the first thing that I would say, if you miss convention, I mean, I, I'm just going to be honest, I feel sorry for you because, mm -hmm. um, Yes, we hear stuff on a daily basis. You need to do this. You need to do this. But convention, what convention did for me is it, it unlocked my mind to absorb everything a lot better. Um, the information that was given at a convention is something that has so much value. I can't even, I can't even put on Like if you just the fact that it was free, unbelievable. Like th that was an event that should have cost thousands and thousands of dollars. In I agree. Opinion. And just the, the notes that I took, I literally had a you know, brand new notebook. And I think it was, I used half of it, more than wow. half of it and okay. just notes. So, I mean, I could sit here and tell, you know, all the things that I learned, but I, we could spend here hours. So, so let's get, give them like, give them one or two things that really hit home for you. Okay. That's going to impact you right away. So it's actually something that you just touched on a few minutes ago when you were speaking, it's um, sacrifice. So the biggest thing for me is, well, I, I know what my why is. I've got two four-year-old twin daughters. They're my why, but they're also my sacrifice. And I didn't realize that until this weekend, listening to Dave Anderson. And then it, it actually resonated the most when you were actually up there on the, um, the Hall of Fame panel and you mentioned it and it finally just like hit me. It was just like an epiphany, like, okay, I, I'm doing this for my girls so that their future, they don't have to worry about things. Um, they can have the, the things that they want in life, that their college is paid for, all that. But it, it made me realize that I'm going to have to sacrifice them now to make sure that they have those things in the future. So the biggest thing for me, the biggest takeaway, I think, more than anything was 
my why is my sacrifice. I'm going to have to sacrifice my why for a couple of years so that I can have that time with them in the future. Yeah. And, and so let's touch on that, right? Like when we say sacrifice, you're not going to give up your kids, right? No. Like we're not, we're not giving up our kids, right? Like we're not yeah. doing that. Right. Right. <laughs> but um, what we are really talking about is time. Right. Mm-hmm. And so you're obviously a dedicated father. You yep. want to be there for them. You want to provide for them yep. and you want to give them the best life you can give them, yep. which I do as well. But I think it's a matter of how much time are you giving them now and how can you use your time maybe a little differently yep. to to get what you're trying to accomplish, to give them a better life, to give them more time. In the exactly. Future. And and the thing that that made the most sense is like, so the weekends, I, I, you know, I'm a single dad. I have them, you know, 50 percent of the time. So the weekends I do have with them, I've been spending all day, every day with Mm -hmm. them. Um, So now I know what I need to do is, you know, Saturday mornings, I'm going to dedicate to running appointments from, you know, eight o'clock till noon. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to spend the rest of the day with them on Saturdays, but it's also going to make it so the time that I do spend with them is going to be more valuable because I'm going to dedicate even more time to them when I do have them. And it's just going to add more value to that than just, you know, if I, not saying that I don't, you know, have that value when I'm with them all day, every day, but it's just going to be more impactful. You know yeah. I mean? And you can, you can, you, you know, can give them the, 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 take the them to undivided the zoo, attention, right. do more take, things. That's take it. Take them to the things. zoo, you know, go to the park, do more bike rides, do just really hone in on giving them more dedicated time, quality time, yeah. good quality yeah. time. Yeah. That's what matters. Yeah. And they'll remember that, right? Yep. Like yep. when they're, they're four years old, they're yep. not going to know if you spent 15 hours with them in a day versus eight. Right. right. You know, as right. an example, you know, they're, they're going to be happy that they have you. Yep. That's the most important thing. So yep. awesome, man. What, what's another thing besides sacrifice? Um, so the other thing um, I think that really hit home is um, that I need to see what did I write that I need to stop looking this, looking at this as a job. And I'm, and this is going to sound really weird, but I'll, I'll explain it. Mm-hmm. Um, I need to stop looking at this as a job and start looking to it as a, as a business. Um, like I need my business. Yes. It's my business. Yes. I own my business. It's, it's mine, whatever, Mm -hmm. but my business is bigger than me. Agreed. Um, and I, and I wasn't focused on that. And, and that's what convention helped me realize is, um, I, I was doing things to like benefit me because it's, though, this is my job, you know, I go out and sell insurance, but what I was doing for myself wasn't benefiting my business and my business is bigger than me. So I need to take myself away and look at it as my business and give back to my business rather than myself. So when you say that, um, are you talking about building a team, building a team, um, buying more leads, um, doing the things that can fuel my business rather than myself. Got it. Got it. So, and And I think in the beginning, a lot of people struggle with that, Sean, including myself, right? Like when I, when I came on board, it was survival for me. You've probably heard me say that a bunch of times, right? I had to make money to pay my bills, which it Mm -hmm. sounds like, you know, you left your corporate job. And so now you, you gotta, you gotta earn, you got two girls, right? Like, so it's, I get it. Right. But I think that that's huge for you to understand that. And, and also understand that you and I, we're not the sauce. Mm -hmm. We're not like, I'm not the sauce. Like I'm just here. The sauce is the system, right? right? The sauce is um the sauce is the system so so it's a matter of introducing the business to people and then letting them a find the information um and then supporting and helping them through the process but allowing them to really you know make a decision and do their own work and just helping them along the way yep cool man well now that you've done you've you've been in convention you were locked in front row locked and loaded all weekend what is your goal for the rest of the year what do you really want to do um a build build a team. Um, I need to start. You, you know, I, I I didn't start building a team just because, like I just said, I wasn't mm-hmm. I wasn't focused on my business. I was focused on myself. Okay. Um, uh, you know, I was trying to hone hone the craft here on my side, but I'm ready to take that next level and really start to develop a team. Really start to build the team. So that's that's number one. I think more than, more than anything. And then what about anything on production? Um, Production leads. I, I got to double double what I'm doing in leads. Um, Cause I mean, let's be honest, you guys just seen the numbers, you know, my, my issue paid was right at 13,000. Yeah. I'm working a shit ton of hours, but let's be sorry about the cursing. You're good, dude. Let's be honest. Those numbers are part-time numbers. Yeah. I mean, you can you know, do more. Yeah. You can do so, more. And okay. that, that's going to come down to lead flow. That's going to come down to, you know, 
taking out, and this is, this is another one thing that I took away from it and taking out the white space in my calendar. Yes. Yes. No, nothing good comes from white space, man. No white space is just, it's like dead air. Yep. You know what I mean? It doesn't do anything. So awesome, man. Hey, proud of you, bro. Uh, just want to say one last thing, super proud of you for hall of fame and for giving us, um, the foundation, um, for our businesses to make our, our businesses grow. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you. you bet. All right. So you heard it there from Sean. Um, and guys, you know, um, I'm not that special. I really am not. Like I just, I took the information and I, and I executed on it. That's, that's really all I did. So anybody can do that. All right. Next, I want to bring up uh, Glenda Martin. So Glenda, let's see. I don't see her camera on. Glenda, we're going to need to see you. We're going to need to see that, that pretty smile of yours. So let's get that camera on for us, please. Don't make me turn it on for you. I don't know what's going on. All right, we'll wait for Glenda to pop on. Hang on one sec, you guys. So Glenda went to an event. She lives on the East Coast and she got to go to an event in Florida. I believe in Miami, if I'm not mistaken. Glenda, you with us? All right. Hang on one sec, you guys. We might have to call an audible here if she doesn't get on. She's on, I see her on the call. I'm um, just waiting for her to unmute and um, turn her camera on and we'll get started. Hmm. All right, we're going to probably have to call an audible here. Um, Glenda, one last, last attempt, Glenda. You coming on with us? Okay, so we're going to have to call an audible. Glenda is not going to be able to join us. Let's see. I want to see if we have anybody else on. Who do we got here? Um, you know what? I'm, I'll just finish this off for today. So, um, all right. I, I think one thing that you heard from, you know, regardless of what location you're at um, or what location you went to, the, the same training happened, right? There wasn't something magical that happened at one location versus another. And I think what, what you want to take away from that is this. It doesn't matter where you are in the U.S. It doesn't matter um, what your background is, what your experience is. Um, we all have the same exact opportunity. We have all have gotten the same exact information. And it's a matter of not just getting the information, but executing on the information. And so the more people that are going to execute, are, those are the people that are going to accomplish what they want here, right? And so for you guys are watching this now, maybe on the replay, don't just take that information and, and, and just, you know, get inspiration from it and motivation from it from a weekend and just say, I'm fired up. But ask yourself, what are you going to do with it? What change are you going to make? Because remember, if you want change, if nothing changes, then nothing changes, right? But if, if you want to change, how, let, me, let me repeat that saying because I can't even duplicate it because it's not off the top of my head. The saying was, Dave Anderson said, let's repeat this real quick, right? Nothing changes until something changes, right? So what is that something going to be for you? Could be one thing, two things, three things, whether it's on the lead side, on the dial side, on the in-home side, right? So what things are going to change for you to improve your business, okay? You gotta ask yourself that. You gotta be accountable to yourself. And if you're not sure how or what or why, reach out. But you should have gotten enough information to make a change. So now it's just a matter of 
executing on that change and doing it daily, creating that discipline. And you guys will be wherever you guys want. So hope this helps. Guys, convention was a blast. Um, don't take that information lightly. Soak it in, embrace it, use it to blast forward, use it to more importantly, help families. And then not only help families, change your family's life as a, bri as a byproduct of helping families, right? By me helping families, I've been able to change my life. I've, I'm giving value to others. And in return, I'm getting value, which is commission from the insurance carriers. So go out there, give value, love the client that you're with, show them that you care. It's not just a policy. Don't be transactional, help them. And in return, you'll have clients for life. You'll have a big business. You'll have a big bank account and, and life will be good. I can promise you that. So with that said, guys, go out there. Today's dial day. Let's finish dialing. Set up your appointments. 15 appointments minimum today. Blast forward. And uh, if, you, if you're continuing to dial, jump on the dial team, ffldialteam.com and, and dial with your peers. All right, guys. With that said, we'll talk to you later. Bye for now.